Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. So today I actually want to just talk about the Canon EOS R camera that came out in 2018. Is it still a viable option in 2022 going into 2023? The holiday season is here, so there'll probably be a lot of sales going on. So I would imagine you can pick up the EOS R. I would, I've seen it last year. I think I've seen some for like 1200, 1300. So they definitely get market down a lot. Or if you can pick up a used one, I've even seen them go as low as 1100 if people just want to get rid of them but they're actually still a fantastic camera and I still use mine to this day pretty much every day so this is my EOS R with the 24 I mean a 70 to 200 so it's probably one of my favorite lenses to use for my EOS R so basically the EOS R for me is just an outdoor camera I use my R6 with the 24 to 105 for my studio work. So that's kind of, you know, what my go-to is for studio. And the reason being is I prefer the EOS R. Couple different things. So the features, everything else comes down to really just photography for me. I'm not a video guy. I don't do a lot of videos, so it's all based on photography for me. So I'm not really gonna go into the video specs. But if you're just looking for a good all around, very affordable photography camera, I think the EOS R is still one of the best options out there, especially if you're just trying to go out and take a few photos and you, you know, enjoy the Canon ecosystem. And as well as just a backup camera. I originally just got it as a backup camera from my, I actually had the R5 before. Sold that and read, you know, I'd rather just have two cameras than one. So I sold the R5 and ended up buying the R6 and the R. Uh, both of them were brand new. And I found a good deal on my R as well, so, but I've had it before and I've enjoyed it. And I've had pretty much every other camera brand that there is. I've gone through Leica, Sony, filming on my Fuji now, but so far I really just enjoy the EOS R. It's such an inexpensive but simple camera to use. Uh, if, you, if you're looking for an EOS R, I'm sure you've seen all the reviews. It's been out for so long. Everyone knows the touch bar is stupid. Yes, I don't use it. I just turned it off, but as far as everyday shooting it's a fantastic camera kind of a very minimalist setup which is what i like it's very simple in design i actually prefer the grip on this versus the r6 just how it's nice and like very streamlined it's all very much like an sl so it feels kind of like an sl grip um, versus the r6 which kind of has the much wider grip i actually like a little bit skinnier grip it's a little easier to hold in the hand and just kind of, I don't know, I just, I prefer a simpler, smaller setup. And uh, with the magnesium body, it actually feels really fantastic. The R6 is definitely made slightly cheaper, but still, you know, specs wise, it's gonna crush the R as far as video goes. But for photography, you're really not gonna notice that much of a difference. 30 megapixels, it definitely helps when you're cropping. But as far as dynamic range and eye tracking, everything else is gonna be pretty much on par unless you're shooting in really high dynamic range you know areas which i don't recommend just plan your shots go in the morning go in the evening don't try to force the shot when it's not there position the model somewhere else go somewhere else do something else don't just look for high dynamic range areas and trying to just push the shadow you know go in the sliders all different directions when i'm shooting really i put it straight into capture one i really don't touch the image after that you know, besides color grading slightly, but as far as exposure, I very rarely touch many of the sliders. I usually nail it pretty close where I want it to look in camera. When I put it on the computer, it pretty much already looks like my end result as far as just exposure, but I will change the white balance, of course. You're gonna need to change a few things and maybe just tailoring the colors to fit the theme. So maybe it's an outdoor shoot of a country Maybe you want, you know, country vibe, you want it to look a little more, you know, run down older, maybe a little warmer versus like something green, where if you're all green, you might want to cool it down a little bit, make it a little more moody. So just things like that, but otherwise, Canon EOS R is one still van, you know, fantastic camera. Really nothing wrong with it. Um, I haven't had any issues as far as tracking, you know, eye tracking, it never misses a shot. I've never been like, oh, I wish this focus faster or better. Everything just works right. It's a great, great photography camera, especially if you could find one on the used market or you get one on sale coming up. There's plenty of, you know, great RF lenses now. I use the F4s. 
I love them. I do have the 35 and the 50 as well, the 1.8s. Fantastic lenses, but for far as my work cameras, this is my setup. And going back into indoor outdoor shooting, okay, so indoor shooting for tethering, the EOS R processor is a little bit slower, so it doesn't get the images to the computer as fast as the R6 will. I'm assuming that's also due to megapixels, but as far as just getting the images right on the computer, the R6 usually is very fast, and the R was kind of getting a little slower, so it's kind of lagging a little bit. But another key difference is the shutter sound. So the shutter on the R versus the R6, the R is much, much louder. Which, if you're shooting with models, that's actually a good thing because they can actually hear the shutter and they know when to change positions and they know how to move. So if you're shooting with models, especially experienced models, who want to hear the shutter, want to move, I do prefer the R because it is much louder. So here we go. Versus the R6, which is very quiet. You can barely hear it. If you're outdoors shooting, about five feet away, you're not even gonna hear it. So it actually got on my nerves and I was, uh, most of the models were kind of like, I can't even hear it. I don't know if you're taking a picture. So I just switched it. I used the R for outdoors. It's kind of a little bit better body, a little bit, uh, a little more rugged feeling. So I do prefer it. I prefer the minimal buttons. I just wanna go out, shoot, not checking, not spinning the wheels, not using the joystick. Eye tracking works every time. You don't have to change anything. You just go out there, you knock it out. But those are just two small little things that end up being kind of major for me that uh, made me pick the R and just keep on using it. I enjoy it. I don't have a problem with it. Never needed more megapixels necessarily. I don't need more dynamic range necessarily. It's just an all around great camera still. Great pickup, especially during the holiday season. So if you're looking for one, I definitely would recommend it, especially over the RP. I would not buy the RP. It is pretty much kind of more of a, very much of a toy and the prices are very close now. I would definitely just avoid the RP. Go ahead and jump into the R. You get the same batteries as all the R6, the R5. When you want to upgrade, you're already ready to go. You have the batteries. And you just kind of have the exact same feeling of the camera. And it's just much better. Much better build quality. Much better, you know, just great feeling in the hand. Just a better camera all around, I would say. So just if you're looking for a budget-friendly option, go find an R on the used market. Or I'm sure there'll be sales coming up soon. Great camera. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the pictures. These are all shot on the R and the 70 to 200 actually. So yeah, quick one today. Just a little recap of my EOS R that I've had since on and off since it came out. So great camera. Enjoy and I will see you in the next one.